Earlier, he did nothing to calm the hype in that first possession. Four for four, 40 yards, great ball. Talk about his performance early. Well, I, you know, I, I think he was in control and in command, and that's the biggest thing, you know, kind of in this kind of no-huddle look, you know, just having a guy in command. Oh, uh oh we might be out. Look out. Here's the transfer from Wyoming and Texas. Mayor with the grab. But you see, you know, you see Dylan's rhythm out there. You see his tempo. I mean, nothing's too big. Uh, he's in control. You know, bad plays are going to happen. You know, we had the tip pick down there in the red zone. But I love the fact he moved, you know, he moved the one offense. He moved the two offense. Uh, he's doing a nice job out there so far today. This is a, it's, it seems like a rejuvenated receiver core as well. I mean, I know you bring in the two transfers with some experience. Look out. Money ball. Going deep and got Jalen Lloyd. Touchdown on target from Rayola. Yeah, you know, Jalen's one of those guys, you know, he, I mean, it was it was the bye week last year, and, and, and his parents and I were talking, and Jalen and Garrett were talking, like, should we redshirt him, should we not? He had played three games. The second half of the year, there wasn't a, probably a better dynamic receiver in the league other than Marvin Harrison Jr., and so now he has a set, you know, he, he's going to turn around on Monday and go to track practice and get ready for Big Tens right. next Saturday. So we had those guys in the room. They're growing up, adding some guys in, and I think you can see the explosive nature. All three of his touchdowns last year went for 58-plus. He's that guy that can take the top off for you. Yeah, he definitely can. And I think we have a couple more, so it, it makes it fun. You can't. You have to kind of pick your poison on defense. Coach, I want to talk about the iPads and how that's being used on the sideline. And also, is today, are you guys using the communication with the quarterbacks in their helmets? I'm noticing they're making tremendous calls at the line of scrimmage. The pace and the, the tempo and the progression is is really something today. Yeah, we're using all the communication. You know, that the, the company is a Lincoln-based company. So we actually had this last spring and used it, you know, hoping that this rule would pass and kind of getting ourselves used to it. The, you know, goes up until 15 seconds, gives the, the, the coordinator a great opportunity to talk about what he's seeing. But you can't do too much. You have to let the guys play. So they make most of the checks, but, you know, let's say we come out and it's a two high, one high deal, and all of a sudden it's man, he can say, hey, go to this. So uh, luckily a lot of our guys have been in the NFL. They're used to doing that coaching-wise, and we're just preparing these guys at a high level, I think, to when they get to the NFL, do it. And I think all of college football doing it is a great thing. So what is it about the receiver group? We just saw Jalen Lloyd go deep. We talked about the two that you added. What's the change there that has Marcus Satterfield saying, that's probably the best position group I have? Well, I just think they're growing up, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's nothing greater than experience and there's nothing greater than reps. And so, you know, we got out there last year. Those guys made some big plays. I mean, Malachi Coleman, one of our dynamic freshman wideouts last year, he's banged up. You know, he, he had offseason shoulder surgery. He's up to like 218 pounds. I mean, he's can't wait to get him out there. So wow. I just think their confidence and, uh, you know, making plays is contagious. You know, when you see someone make a play, you start to think, I need to I'm going to go make this play.